Malcolm Butler reveals what went through his mind on the sideline of the Super Bowl. Here's what Butler had to say. It was times when I was on the sideline, I just wanted to go up and, you know, say to Belichick or Matt Patricia and just say, this is how we're going to end this. I, I grew up in the Patriot system, you know, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a well man of God. You know, I respect my authority and I just, I just couldn't, I just couldn't ask them for something they didn't want to do. I just was doing my job. It, it, I, I was close to going up there and saying what I wanted to say to Matt or Belichick, but I just stayed in my lane and just did my job, man. I, I really wanted to go ask him, man, but I didn't. Right, you can mm. watch the full Under the Cover episode on Sports Illustrated TV, available now on Amazon channels now. Uh, we welcome Jeff Darlington, Darren Woodson here with us. Mm. So guys, I hear the sounds here. W what was your reaction when you saw that? I mean, people, playing in that game, I played in it three times. Th that's an emotional day. Show off. Going in the, <laughs> I'm just serious. <laughs> I mean, it is, it is such an emotional time because yeah. you live and dream to play this game and to play that at that level, at the Super Bowl. And as a kid, that's what, that was my dream. And to get in that game and then but he, be oh. put in a situation that Malcolm Butler was put in before that game, thinking he was going to start, thinking he was going to play a huge role in the success of this game, and then right before the national anthem, you get told that you're not playing. Would you have said something? Oh, absolutely. I think, what would you have said? I, I don't. I mean, actually, I don't know what I would have said. I think I would have been in shock like That's Malcolm right. Butler because you just don't know how to handle a situation like that. You expect to play, and, and you've been taught all your life, it's game time. I play. I'm a starter. And for Malcolm Butler. Sit through that process, man. That's that's got that's that's hard. That's the part that really still bothers me about this story. Like, I get the genius of Bill Belichick and that he gets the benefit of the doubt when it comes to these decisions. Yeah. I just don't understand still because there's been no explanation from his side and maybe he doesn't feel like he knows it to anybody why he was even active for the game and why he didn't know about the plan beforehand. Yeah. Were they afraid of leaks to the media that it would be a competitive disadvantage? I don't know, but I feel like they owed him enough for what he had done That's for right. the organization yeah. to at least man up and explain him. And from what I understand, they wrote him pretty hard the last several weeks of the season and into that Super Bowl. And it just... I'm, I, and what, it's really weird. Out. Here's what yeah. amazes me, too, because I've had other head coaches ask me, like, hey, do you know what happened up there That's in New right. England? The fact that it's we are now at the end of March, it's almost April here, we're, we're getting close to the draft, and we still, still don't know. Don't know. No. I get it. Belichick doesn't care. I mean, that's fine. He doesn't care that we don't know. He doesn't care yeah. that we're yeah, even sure. discussing it. Whatever, that's fine. I just think that that's not the way to treat human beings. You no, know, you don't. You don't treat guys that way, especially in that moment. I mean, listen, a regular season game, if you have situations like that, but this moment when you have, it's not just about Malcolm Butler. It's not just about Belichick mm -hmm. and Matt, and Matt Patricia. Yeah. You're talking about 47 guys who dressed out for that, that That's day. That's about Tom Brady. It's about Tom Brady. It's about the rest of those guys winning one game That's right. to go down in history and not to have one of your best court players out there. Yeah. Ridiculous. Brady, Crazy we're sir. still talking about it, but I good know. luck to Malcolm. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Someone find out. Go find out. <laughs> All right, our next headline comes from ESPN.com. Case Keenum or not. John Elway would consider quarterback with number five with the number five pick. So that's the headline. So Jeff, what are you hearing in regards to the Broncos' plans for the number five overall pick? I'm hearing that John Elway absolutely would consider taking a quarterback with the number five overall pick. And I think when we look toward first the past couple of years, when Elway realizes maybe the value, ironically, of the quarterback mm. position that he played. Uh, he really does want Case Keenum to come in there and be the starting quarterback. We've seen this time and time again, though. Right. Go back to Matt Flynn in Seattle, and all of a sudden yeah. you pick up Russell Wilson, training camp rolls around him, boom, Russell Wilson's your starter. The, what's most interesting about that number five pick is that Cleveland holds one and four. So in theory, if we're talking about four top quarterback prospects, one of them is going to be available exactly. at five, and Elway is going to have a decision. And that's the question mark right there. Is, is that going to be your guy, the that's guy right. that you covet? Is he yeah. going to be there? it could be, Darren. Like, we don't know who's going to go where, right? Exactly. We still, and that's the question. We still what, don't you, know you what. Do think they should take a quarterback? I think, well, they're, I think if, if the quarterback that they want, if they, that they're yeah. coveting, is right there at, at, at that number at five, right. you got to take him. You have to take him because now you have to build upon that and move, and move this team and this franchise to the next level. If you don't, and you go, and then you're believing in Case Keenum as your number one guy. And I think he's yeah. just a stopgap guy. So if you don't go for the quarterback, you got to go to a position player. You got to go with Chubb. You got to go with the pass rusher. Or, I mean, yeah. Bar I mean, Barkley Bar 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 or Chubb. Exactly. Other quarterbacks go.
I know this was so hard about it because it's like you just don't know what Five's a great gonna spot. Do with the it is. They're sitting, they're sitting well. Yeah. All right. Uh, our final headline comes from the state. Here's what it reads: Gamecock great, Jadavian Clowney, optimistic on contract extension with the Houston Texans. So, Jeff, what's the latest in extension talks between the Texans and Clowney now? Well, Brian Gain, the new general manager, came in, did a lot of evaluations, does uh, like what he sees in Jadavian Clowney and what he has been able to accomplish. I think two of the things that the Texans were originally concerned about, uh, injury, considerations he was dealing with some of those his play was a little bit erratic early on both those things have been alleviated Connie playing great ball to the fact where I do anticipate the two sides will get a deal done uh, it, it, they've begun negotiations they're not there yet but Darren the interesting part to me is like you got like Khalil Mack and yes. and Aaron Donald on the side if I'm Aaron Donald I'm saying okay you're okay, watching everyone's watching now yeah. everyone's watching. I, look, I look at this situation you know you don't know where JJ Watt is health-wise. Yeah. Uh, Merciless went down last year. He was banged up. And you have Clowney, who's played the last two years. He's been pretty healthy. That was right. been the, big, the big question mark on Clowney is, can he stay healthy? I think he's proven that. And he's a game changer. He's become that guy on the edge that can change the game at any point. You have to. If you're the Houston Texans, you have to put yourself somewhere. Because I don't think J.J. Watt is a guy right now that you can absolutely lean on and say he's going to play a full yeah, that, season. That back injury still scares me. Yes. JJ. Yeah. Man, like, it, it bums me out that we didn't get to see Merciless Watt and Clowney on the field yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. See that this season, yeah. man, that'd be All fun. right, quick answer. Donald and Sue or Clowney and Watt? Donald and Sue. Sue. Donald and, yeah. Donald Donald and Sue. Yeah. Donald hey, listen, Aaron Donald is, and I get it. I, I think we're talking about J.J. Watt. He's a little banged up, so the question marks are still there. Right. Yeah. But Aaron Donald, over the last three, four years, has been as dominant you a football what? player as there is. Give me either one. Give me, give me <laughs> no, any, I'm taking, I'm, any I'm of taking, the four. Yeah. I'm taking the inside, too. Yeah? yeah. 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 All right, good. Very definitive today. Like, all right, so to come, the king of cryptic tweets are at it again. We're going to talk the chances of Le'Veon Bell and Odo Beckham Jr. returning to their respective teams. You have all that coming up next. Don't go away. Pepsi's always had great taste. 